push. I'm about to get the sawmill fired up. And last time you probably saw me set the sawmill up for the first time in the six month winter we just had. What you're gonna see today is me take one of these red pine logs that I skidded over the winter. You're gonna see me from start to finish turn it into some lumber. Now I've already cut a little bit, cut this the other day, and uh, it turns out pretty good. So what I'm gonna be using to show you this is the Woodland Mills HM130. So this can cut up to about a 30 inch diameter log. Obviously today I got, I don't know what that is, maybe eight to 10 inch log, but we're gonna go ahead and make some material out of it. So hold on, let's go ahead and try this. All right, so the main thing you're gonna need for this is a tape measure. And other than that, uh, that's really about it. So just getting set up here, what I do to start is I make sure these, and these come with the mill, uh, these, and there's another set that comes with it, these babies here. These come with it, obviously smaller logs, bigger logs. These have to be positioned in one of the stake holes here. And one thing that you'll notice, see the numbers two, three, and four. What I did was I put that and what that indicates is when this is set at two, so when that's level with the top of the holder here, the top of the stake hole, that means that this is two inches above that. I do that for a quick reference. So when I'm cutting material, I can tell how high the blade is in relation to this because if you come on over here I have found out the hard way so the blade notice I've cut that before so I put these on for a quick reference if I'm cutting two inch material and I can see a three on here that tells me I'm gonna hit this so anyways that's for another day we can get into that more but I'll set this all the way at the top and I got three here but I just set two don't really need three at this point, pull these out. Okay. And I'll cut this log down here, so don't pinch your fingers. And it's also a good idea not to walk in here. I should probably not be walking in here either. If this log starts to roll, it'll pinch me. So try to walk around the outside here. <clears throat> All right. Okay. I don't know how long this is. This one looks longer than 12 feet, but it doesn't really matter at this point. And what's important here. This log's pretty pretty straight. If it had a hump to it or anything like that, I like to put that either on the top or on the bottom. You don't want it curved, okay? You'll find out why a bit later. So, get it positioned. I'm actually just gonna push it down a little bit. And get pine gum all over my hands. Okay, oops thing tightened that's better got to make sure the logs tight against these which it is that's a log dog I guess you call it it uh, clamps it in position and it's pretty good right there so that's that portion and what I do before I mill it is I look through all my junk here I get a brush and I just go over the log and I'm taking off any dirt. Now I did skid this in the winter, but I did have it piled when there was no snow. So there's probably some dirt on the side and you don't want the blade to, uh, to run through the dirt. So like down here, you can see some right here on the end, especially I find like the ends when I'm moving it, I end up hitting it into the ground. Okay, <clears throat> that's pretty good. That's that. Now, before I can actually start the mill, I gotta tension the blade, and that's this here. So I come on up, this is where I keep my torque wrench. Now, this gets torqued to 25 foot-pounds. So, what I'll do, I'll get it close. And before I get it close, what I should point out
what I should point out is this blade here has to be flush with the back side of this wheel. So I run my hand there to make sure it's close to start, which it is. You don't want to torque it down with it not in the proper position. It'll fly off after you start it. Set my torque wrench to 25 foot-pounds. Okay, 25. Before I started and start cutting and making sure it's going to uh, gonna cut, I, I double check it's flush. I rotate it a few times with my hands. And what I'm looking for here is to make sure this blade remains flush with the back of those wheels. So I'd rather have it start to move right now and know that there needs to be adjustment than start it up and have it fly off and dull my blade. So that's quite good. It's it's gonna be uh, gonna be good there. I do it so many times it becomes a little a little bit methodical but it saved me a few times and uh in the beginning stages when i didn't do that it's also cost me a few times cost me a few blades okay so torque down that looks good next thing we're gonna do is fire up the engine so gas on choke on it's got fuel, oil, should be good. Okay, so it's up and running. I wear earmuffs, which you'll see me put on in a second. A little chilly out, so I'm gonna leave the choke on for a little bit longer. business here so what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna bring the blade up and how you bring the blade up is with this here and you'll notice this I'm gonna be watching it moves down this scale what this tells me is right now the blade is gonna cut a three inch distance from the bed up the log so to start what I do is I bring it over to the log itself See right there it's gonna give me you know a little bit of waste along the top that's probably gonna be a good first cut now I'm always cutting material that's either one two three four inches in, in thickness so when I'm when I'm cutting uh, or when I start the cut I, I try to get it so it's fairly close to one of these even numbers so let's make a seven inch cut to start all right seven inch cut my last check before I actually cut as I look at these, you'll notice I can see the number four, so that's about four inches above the bed. So I'm gonna be good there. Put on the earmuffs, that's locked in place. We'll make sure the water's gonna come out. Might be able to see the water's coming out from the tank, so we're good there. So let's go ahead and cut. As you guys can see it took more material off down here than it did right here which is fine because the log is probably bigger at the bottom than it is the top so what's gonna happen now I'm just gonna make one more cut because I don't think I took quite enough material off so I'm just gonna repeat I'll probably go down to about six inches that way I'm left with a one inch thick leftover piece I'll probably cut into a one by three steak or one by two steak so Let's bring it down to six inches, make one more cut. So follow 
pulling this down now to six inches. There. Lock it into place and repeat. Once you're happy with the piece as a starting point, what I do is I take a tape measure and I figure out what the thickness is going to be here. And I got about five and a bit. I don't think I'm going to take any more off there. So I'm going to raise this up, pull it back, and then I'm going to flip that log over. So now I got a flat surface on the bunks, push that over, and this is where it becomes important to watch how high these are. I'm going to bring it right down to two. bit of dirt here okay now what I'm making here with this material I'm probably gonna make two by fours and just looking here I might be able to get one 2x6 out of this. Yeah, I can probably get one 2x6. Now let's see what I get working with. Uh, I'm probably gonna... I can probably cut that at 4 inches. And then I'll get one 2x4, one 2x6. So that'd be called flat sawing, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I think that's flat sawing, but... I'm gonna cut down to the 4 inch level. Cut that off, flip it over, and uh, go from there, so... Let's give it a go. Following this down to four inches. There. Let's see what we're dealing with. And we'll go with that for now. looks pretty good so I got four inches of material and if we look at this piece let's find out how wide it is and it looks like I'm gonna be able to get a two by six out of this so I'm gonna cut one two by six out so I think before I move this I'll make sure that's less than two there which I can't see a two so that means it's less than two inches down check this one let's drop that down just a little So I'm going to make one more slab cut. For this one I'm going down to two inches.
hold on to this. This has become a two by six. Making sure this is flush or flat, I guess, against the, the edge. Looking for the lowest distance here. If I look, I can probably squeak out a seven and a half there. Uh, yeah, seven and a half to go for. It. Trying to make a flat edge. Seven and a half inches. finish height six inches Well, we got some nice lumber already cut up here. I'm going to get back at it here. I got a whole pile in front of me. Plus, I got a pile up the trail there. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. You'll get notifications as I post more videos. Appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully, you learned something. If you didn't, hopefully, at least you enjoyed. And as always, put some comments down below. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. So I'm going to get back to work here. We'll see you guys all next time.